It is the Feast of the Ascension. Good morning. Hey, welcome to St. John Vianney. Our opening hymn this morning, number 606, A Hymn of Glory Let Us Sing. Number 606. Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving, for the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation, and where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Now we invite those who are going to the liturgy of the word for children in the chapel to please come forward for a blessing. A reading from the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, he presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard him speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, at this time, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord.
God mounts his throne to shouts of joy. A blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy. A blare of trumpets for the Lord. All you peoples, clap your hands. Shout to God with cries of gladness. For the Lord, the Most High, the Awesome, is the great King over all the earth. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne Amid shouts of joy, the Lord, amid trumpets blasts, sing praise to God, sing praise, sing praise to our King, sing praise. God mounts his throne shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. For King of all the earth is God, sing hymns of praise. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call what are the riches of glory and his inheritance among the holy ones? And what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe? In accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord.
and teach all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always until the end of the world. Hallelujah. with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning with Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, raised his hands and blessed them. As he blessed them, he parted from them and was taken up to heaven. They did him homage and then returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple praising God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This gospel may our sins be taken. Jesus tells his disciples, you will be my witnesses. Today we celebrate the feast of the ascension of our Lord. And I'd like us to reflect upon the question, how are you and I called to witness Christ in our lives today? I think we all know we truly witness Christ in our lives by striving to follow what is God's plan. I think all of us would agree that God's plan is not always very clear to us. And also, often God's plan is not always what we think the plan is meant to be. Certainly 20 years ago when I worked on Wall Street, I never expected to be up here as a priest. But I reflected on it a lot, about the discernment of how we follow God's plan. And I read on Facebook the past week about a seminarian that is on his deathbed. The bishop got permission to ordain him early. And it made me recall a few years ago, I got to know Father Scott Carroll, whose life followed a similar path. I connected with Father Carroll's story because like me, he would be ordained later in life. He spent a good part of his early adult life teaching history in a middle school. But he said he continually felt God calling him to a new direction. He said it was his duty to find out what God wants him to do and how he's called to be a witness of Christ with how he lives his life. Eventually he felt called to enter seminary to discern. But God's path often takes different tracks. During his years in seminary, he was diagnosed with cancer, and he put up a strong fight. But he said he always knew that no matter how much he wants to live and be a priest, ultimately it's God's plan that would unfold. When his time became limited, his bishop got permission to ordain him seven weeks early with his family surrounding his bed. Two days later, after his ordination, Father Carroll presided at his first Mass from his bed, then died a couple hours later. But he strived to witness Christ with how he lived his life, like you and I are called to do. 
And it's similar to that of the feast we celebrate today with the Ascension. At the Ascension, before moving beyond their sight, Jesus told his disciples to continue his saving activity. They were to be his witnesses in how they lived in the world then. They were commissioned to go and make disciples and lead people to conversion by proclaiming the good news. They were to teach that those who were baptized to observe all Jesus taught them. So the ascension was not the conclusion of Christ's redemptive work. Rather, it was a handing over the mission to the disciples then, and now to Father Carol, to me, and every one of us here in this church. That's the responsibility of our faith. It's a true gift of joy to continue Christ's saving work in the world, an awesome responsibility. So the feast today is a call to renew our participation in the mission of our church. And when we come here to participate in the Holy Mass, the highest form of prayer, we are to be nourished in word and sacrament to help always renew our lives so we can be today's disciples. And when we are committed to the church and its teachings, we can bring others into the faith. We can help those who prepare for baptism. When we speak about our faith and its relevance to our lives, we then teach other people the joy of forgiveness and mercy, the gift of our faith, the gift of eternal life. That's how we witness Christ. Every day in word and deed, just like the first disciples. I've also reflected a lot the past week and a half on the installation mass I attended of our new archbishop. There were about 300 priests at the installation at the shrine, probably 100 deacons, religious sisters and brothers, and about 2,000 parishioners from Washington, Atlanta, and Chicago. I myself got stuck way in the back behind the high altar, so the entire mass I could see nothing but I could listen. What I could see was the 300 priests sitting in front of me. So as I looked around, I started to recognize the number of them that were a huge part of that led me to the priesthood. I saw priests that taught me when I was growing up in Bowie. I saw priests that were there for me in college when I was at the University of Maryland. I saw the priest that guided me to enter seminary. I saw the priest that formed me in seminary. And I saw the priest that helped me in my first few years as a priest. Every one of them was a witness of Christ to me. So the installation mass was beautiful. But what impacted me more was God showing me how blessed I was that so many people witnessed Christ to me by their lives that led me to find out my part in God's plan. That's what God wants for all of us here, for all of his children. So today is a day to remember the importance to discern our call every day, how we're called to witness Christ with our lives. And when Father Carroll found his way to witness Christ, pursuing the priesthood, he said, I consider the vocation of priesthood to be the most rewarding thing God could ever call me to do. And that's what it's about. When we pursue the path each of us is called to do, whatever God is asking, we find the most rewarding thing that ever possibly could happen to us. The ascension and then the descent of the Holy Spirit on the first disciples brought joy and energized them to be the witnesses of Christ. Let us pray today and let us pray over the next week as we prepare for Pentecost to acknowledge the same joy God has given us. And then let us be true witnesses of Christ today. Amen.
Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, with the heart of our Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. Let us now bring all our needs and our prayers to our loving Father. For the church, that as we await Christ's return, we might be true witnesses in our life as disciples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our youth, as they discern their vocation in life, that they may find wisdom and guidance in living the faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those struggling with depression, mental illness, or addictions, may they find strength in Christ to help them in their struggles. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our For all who are persecuted for their faith, may the Holy Spirit and the prayers of the Christian community strengthen them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our For our food pantry, May it continue to be blessed to be able to help the people in our community that are in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sister parishes in Nicaragua, Mexico, and Mississippi, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the good health, peace of mind, healing, and safety of all of our priests, my fellow deacons and our wives, those in religious life and their lay ministers, and that more may answer the call to these ministries. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. And for what other intentions shall we pray? For those who are incarcerated and their families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For those intentions we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who need our prayers, for those who ask for our prayers, for the sick of our parish and our families, especially for those confined to hospitals, nursing homes, detention centers, treatment centers, and their own homes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our beloved dead, especially for Monsignor James Lockman, and for all the deceased members of our parish and our families, may they have their eternal ward with the risen Christ in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In a special way this morning, we pray for Maureen Sander, for whom this Mass is being offered. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love and mercy, thank you for hearing our prayers. We now ask you to grant them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our offertory song today is number 607, Lord, You Give the Great Commission, number 607. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John Vianney and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence 
we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Wilton our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, and to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we have the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, and the glory Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace taken. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be
Amen. Amen.
so I have loved you. Go and live on in my love. Let us be bred, blessed by the Lord, broken and shed, life for the world. Let us be one, love freely poor. Let us be Before our announcements and final prayers, we have a couple speakers to talk to us about Catholic Heart Work Camp, uh, which this year is coming up in mid-July. So I'd like to invite them up to say a few words.
Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Fred Hilly, and this is Caitlin Russell. We've been going to Catholic Art Work Camp for. Uh, this, this will be my third year. Her third year. I think my sixth one. And. Speak up. Speak up. Get closer to that mic. All right. <clears throat> this is our third year going to work camp together. Um, but as an adult, if you ask a teenage high school teacher, you give up a week of your break to go hang out with a bunch of strange teenagers and sleep on a floor and eat uncrustable sandwiches, you're going to say no, right? <laughs> but I said yes eventually. And what I saw in a bunch of other cities was the Holy Spirit moving a bunch of kids to help complete strangers, moving the strangers. I saw a priest dancing, right? We saw little old ladies who wouldn't let the kids in the house use the bathroom, baking them a cake by Wednesday. And we saw lives change. And the kids who go want to go back again. They want to bring other kids with them. And it, basically, it's a chance to put this Catholic faith to work. And you see people who aren't Catholic, don't trust us. And they say, oh, they're Christians too. And, you know, it, it kind of softens the whole community in a way. And the biggest part for me is seeing the kids come back lit up to show their faith and to do something to make even this community different when they get back. And that, you know, the week on the way back, they're like, what can we do back home? What can we do? And, and that change in those kids is what's worth it for me. And not everybody can give up a week. Not everybody can go. But this is the part where we ask you, if you can't go, maybe help send somebody else. Hi, so as Mr. Freddy said, this, is, this will be my third year of going to Catholic Art Work Camp. And uh, it's a very powerful experience of faith just to be with a bunch of other kids who share my faith and fi to find people who have similar interests and to put our faith to work and really help people and make a tangible difference in the world. It means a lot. Uh, so if you could help us go this year, that would be wonderful. We'll have people in the back with envelopes and such. Thanks a lot. Oh, one more thing. Sorry, one more thing. And if, you, if you're an adult who can go, maybe not this year, but I'm inviting you next year. You should go. It's worth it. So last year we went to Hartford, Connecticut, and we joined about 220 other teenagers. Um, from all over the United States. Uh, this year we're going to Morganton, North Carolina. Um, and again, it'll be about 250 teenagers with us to do worship in the morning with mass. During the day we go out to sites and do work in the community. And in the evening we do praise and worship, adoration, and many different things. Um, it was definitely last year one of the most powerful experiences for me and to witness our youth, which are truly on fire uh, with the faith. Um, so if you would like to help, we have a table in the festival room. Um, you can give any amount, $1, $100. Um, it is an expensive trip, so we try to offset the cost that our teenagers have to pay. Um, so if you do sponsor, we're having a spaghetti dinner July 27th. So we're going to invite you to come to that, and the teenagers will serve you, and they will also talk about their experience. We'll have videos and different things. So it's a chance for you to help and then also to see us the, the results. So again, there's a table in the festival room if you'd like to help. Oh, welcome to all visitors this, this morning. Um, we do have hospitality today after this mass. Um, so please stay around, have a cup of coffee, a treat, um, and you know, socialize a bit uh, before you go on with your day. The Knights of Columbus Ladies Auxiliary is collecting baby and maternity supplies for birthright. Please see the flyer in the bulletin for details. We'll be showing Bishop Barron's series on the Mass starting Monday, June 10th in the Family Life Center Theater. Please see the flyer in the bulletin for details. For those of you that use offertory envelopes, the next year's envelopes that start in July have arrived. We'll have them at next weekend's after the Mass is for you to pick up or come by the office this week to pick it up. The annual men's club cookout is this Friday, June 7th at 6 p.m. in the outdoor pavilion. All men of the, men of the parish are welcome to come. 
This Friday, June 7th, we have a holy hour to pray for the 10 men being ordained to the priesthood for the Archdiocese of Washington and to pray for vocations. We'll start at 6 p.m. in the chapel with exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. We'll pray the evening prayer. Adoration will then continue throughout the night until the next morning. And this being the first weekend of the month, our poor box collection goes to the food pantry. If you'd like to donate, ushers will be at the door to collect. And thank you always for your support. Please join me in praying Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I should walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and your staff, you give me courage. You have spread a table before me in the sight of my foes. My head you've anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. Surely goodness and kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant we pray that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And let us go forth on this Ascension Sunday singing number 657, Holy God, we praise thy name. Number 657.